My name is Tom Dalgetty, I'm a record producer and we're here in my studio in Wiltshire called Psalm Studios. <laughs> Growing up, I was always like fascinated by records that were made in the 50s, 60s, 70s. Um, so that was quite a thrill to me, like making something. They're like, oh my God, you know, someone might unearth this in 50 years' time and, and still think it's good. The first Royal Blood record is a, is a big, significant thing to a lot of people. I'm very proud of it. I think it's, it's great and it was sort of came along at the, at the perfect time where you know, at that point, English kind of rock and indie was, was very sort of straight-laced and, and polite. And it was quite fun sort of being the big bombastic band. Not that I was in the band. But like, you know, like be, being responsible for that kind of hefty kind of weight was... Uh, you know, a lot of fun because it seemed kind of irreverent compared to the things that had, you know, that had gone before. I think my first ever experience with Laney uh, was I, I had like a, a Laney combo in, I guess it would have been late 90s. I had like, I think it was a TF30. So that was my first ever kind of experience with him, which I think even then I shamelessly I, I wanted a Laney because I'd seen in the fold out of Black Sabbath Volume 4, Iomi used Laney. So I was like, well, obviously, obviously I need that. Even though that, you know, the, the, the tube fusion range was probably not that similar to what he was using in the early 70s. But um, that's kind of what drew me to it for sure. And then since then, um, I just became a, a, a little bit obsessed with that sort of um, late 60s, early 70s supergroup thing. So I found that sort of six or seven years ago, uh, having looked for them for ages, and, and sometimes you'd, you, you know, you'd find them and they'd be like astronomically expensive, and I eventually found one that was kind of slightly sensibly priced. Just using that in conjunction with a uh, like a treble boost pedal, I've got a few different ones, but just sounds like the real deal. Uh, and then later on, my friend Ace from Skunk and Nancy was like, oh, you, you should try this. Uh, I've got this clip amp and it's like a really unusual, from a strange era, you should definitely try it out. And I was like, right, I've got to hear this. So I got him to bring it over. It's really odd. It's like, it doesn't sound like, you know, a normal amp. It sounds like it's got a, a sort of a broken fuzz pedal that you can never bypass. This is the LA30BL and yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's great. It, it's basically everything that that can do uh, without melting your face. A bit more controllable, a bit more uh, sensible on the wattage front. Uh, but it just sounds completely authentic and, you know, I've, I've been using it pretty much non-stop. <laughs> I've actually been using it with the monolith distortion, which seems to sound really good, into the treble channel, actually, which I always thought of assumed you'd want it the other way around. I always thought it'd be like, I'll go into the bass channel and then do a sort of treble boost type distortion. And... Uh, this way round seems to sound better, so go figure. <laughs>